Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. And I, if it's the first time you're visiting my channel, subscribe, like. And I cover a lot of areas, a lot of subjects that I, you know, I'm not that I'm not familiar with, but I would like to say I empathise with different people's situations. And just because I'm not in a place, it does not mean I can't be of that place. It doesn't mean that I cannot empathise just because I'm not an undocumented citizen. It doesn't mean I cannot empathise with those who have been doc who are undocumented. Just because I'm, you know, I'm not in a foreign country going through a certain situation doesn't mean I cannot empathise. And the same with those who are disabled. Just because I'm not disabled, physically disabled, and hopefully not any otherwise disabled, it doesn't mean I cannot empathise with the disabled and talk on topics that affect them. Like, it's the same with the elderly, the same with the young, the same with victims of violence, victims of abuse, victims who have uh, been um, overpowered by police and stuff like that. So I talk on a wide variety of things. I also talk about incidents that happen in America. Some people say, why are you sticking your nose in? But I stick my nose in anywhere I think I can get information and share it with people. It may benefit. Now, today I thought I would discuss um, the personal independent payment. Um, only because I was listening to a video where a man was struggling and he was saying ever since the um, disability allowance turned into the personal independent payment, he has had hell. Now, this man has sclerosis, he's got arthritis, he's, he's got one leg that's numb with arthritis, you know, he can't walk properly, and apparently he went, he was asked, let me just read what I say, because you know me, I'm, I forget things, and plus I have an appointment in about 25 minutes, so I've got to do this quickly, otherwise I would ad-lib. Um, so... A personal independence payment, PIP, was introduced on the 8th of April 2013, which replaced the disability living allowance um, for people aged between 16 and 64. Um, apparently, you'll receive a letter from the government confirming that you're eligible for personal independent payments and that your DLA is coming to an end, and then you'll go on PIP. If That's probably happened already, because this came out in 2013, well, the, when they started it, but you know, they kind of roll it out over time, so there may be people still waiting for this letter. So it doesn't mean that because it's been rolled out, everybody's got it, because there's millions of people on disability. Um, once you get that um, letter, you'll be getting a 40-page, 40-page questionnaire asking you how your disability is affecting you. This comes in about 12 languages. And the thing with this questionnaire, it actually reminds you of everything that's wrong with you. You know what I mean? It's quite a traumatic process and it can actually cause depression when you realise how vulnerable you are. It's like, you know, when somebody has died and somebody comes back and says to you, how are you feeling? And then you have to, you kind, it makes you uh, acknowledge all those emotions you had suppressed. That's what these 40 page questionnaires do. All the things you'd suppressed and thought you were coping with, it brings it to the fore. And it's a reminder of just how incapacitated and how vulnerable you feel and how difficult it is for you to cope. So, anyway, um, it's very intrusive, traumatic. Uh, it brings out all the bad parts of your disability and it makes you acknowledge vulnerability. Um, you have to sign a data protection form which allows them to access your medical records. Um, but the thing is, is that they don't access it anyway. You end up paying for it, you know, if, they, if there's nothing quite right and they haven't acknowledged something that's wrong with you. So you end up going and get it yourself sometimes at a cost. But actually, they've stopped the cost now when you're appealing against DLA which is good it used to be it could range between 50 and 200 pounds um, after you sent off the form you can you can get called for an assessment via ATOS which is a French IT company Capita which is a UK IT company and Maximus which is an American IT company they've um, paying at 500 million 
for these three companies to carry out the assessment. Um, it's usually about a three month process for, for an assessment appointment. And this particular gentleman, he went in after waiting three months, only took about 15 minutes. They didn't assess, they didn't even ask him where his pain was or how he was managing, managing his pain. They didn't give him a physical examination. All they did was repeat some of the questions that were in the form on the 40 page questionnaire he had completed. So it's like reiteration. And the fact of the matter is, maybe they were hoping he wouldn't remember what he put on the questionnaire. Maybe he wants to see if they're going to slip up. These are the kind of things that are really aggravating. When you go in with a genuine disability and they're focusing on paperwork to see if it's consistent, sometimes things change. So suppose you say I've got pain in my in, in the top of my leg and then you happen to say I've got a pain in my arm. Maybe for that day, that is where you recognise the pain to be. It doesn't mean that you're lying. Anyway, sometimes, even when, you know, when you go for this assessment um, appointment, so they reckon that there's people looking out of the window to see what how you get out of the car, how you approach the building, how you go up the steps, and all the way up until the point where you are at the assessor's office. They reckon somebody is watching to see if your body language or anything changes from the time you got out of the car to the time you reach the office. I mean, it is, you know, when I talk about mistrustful I mean I know people try and rip off it's like when you have a car accident there are some people who really try to milk it and I'm a, you know I can understand that but people should really know genuine disability and the, the sad thing is is that the people who they employ to do these assessments are apparently they're not qualified GPs or physicians they're healthcare assistants so they, they just normally do bloods, take your blood pressure and things like that. So there's nobody, there's no kind of physiotherapist or, an, you, know, so, you know, a specialist that is examining you when you go for your disability. No one looking at the actual um, physical disability area. They're just talking. And they might ask you to stick your hands out and do that kind of thing and hold onto things but that's it god forbid if you can hold on to a pen or something they claim that you you've got good upper body management and if you can walk even if it's slowly and you're limping they'll say your your lower mobility is fine anyway um assessments done by healthcare oh i said that didn't i um yeah, I said the, oh, let me just read it. Um, the healthcare advisors don't have medical expertise. They may not understand your disability. So you have to explain to them. So if you do go to see these assessors, don't assume that they know what's wrong with you. Don't assume they've read the paperwork. Don't assume, assume that they have medical expertise. You go through your ailment with a fine tooth comb. Use those three months to examine yourself and self-reflect on what exactly is wrong with you and how it hinders you from progressing and going to work. Because they're not going to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. And it does mean taking a stock. And it might be painful, it might be uncomfortable. But it's in your interest if you need to get your personal independent payment. So it's just about self-reflecting, just looking. When you wake up in the morning, what part of you hurts? How difficult is it for you to put on your slippers? How difficult is it for you when you get up? Where are you hurting? How difficult is it for you to make the bed, go to the bathroom, make something to eat? And, and grade that out from one to ten. Make a diary. For those three months you're waiting for your assessment, have a diary of everything that you are feeling because of your disability. Acknowledge everything. It might be a painful process to go to, but if you need financial help from the DWP, you're going to have to do that. Um, uh, if they decline your um, disability allowance, all payments stop. If you have a mobility car, you have to return it within four weeks. They will then direct you to a process called mandatory consideration. 
that takes another four weeks. You then go back and to a GP and accumulate, and you need to accumulate as much evidence as possible, which you should not have to pay for if you're going through mandatory consideration. So on top of what you have written in your diary, you're going to have to need to go to the GP and ask them for medical records. Sometimes they give you a scanty amount, but they are supposed to give you all of them. Um, if, you're, if you are going through mandatory reconsideration and it is costing you, as of 25th of May 2018, it's against the law for your GP to charge you for medical documents. Um, the third appeal, if the mandatory consideration is denied, you then have to go to a tribunal, you'll complete an SSCCS1 form to take to the to take DWP to court. It's like suing the DWP, actually. You can't use your own solicitors, though, which I think is unfair that you have to use their solicitors. They, they have to make the money every which way because they claim it back from the government or they claim it back from us, the taxpayers. Um, the process is costing the taxpayer one million a week. Twelve months in, he got a date for a tribunal. Um, yeah, this particular guy, he did get... Um, he did get a date for the tribunal, but he only did it by going through his local MP, which, who was really supportive, and he referred him to an advocacy. If you're already claiming disability living allowance, this is a benefit people were allowed to claim since 1992. This wasn't based on income and how your disability affected you as an individual but how your disability affected you as an individual. So it had nothing to do with... Um, the money. Are you already claiming the disability living allowance? This is a benefit. Oh. One sec. Yeah, I'm just going to round this off. Sorry about that. Um, where did I get to? Oh, I'm lost my train of thought now. Okay. Um, yeah, I was saying, are you already claiming the disability living allowance? This is a benefit people were allowed to claim since 1992. This wasn't based on income, but on how your disability affected you as an individual. The DLA had two components, the carers um, needed to help you with the shopping and the motability, which was the car. Um... Yeah, apparently the authority is able to initiate an investigation if they have reasonable suspicion of systematic maladministration or if the system of injustice has been sustained as a result of exercise of professional judgment. Miss Anderson, I don't know where she's from. Oh, she's, she's the Northern Ireland Public Services Ombudsman, Nipso, Marie Anderson has informed the Department of Communi Communities that she is launching an investigation into the way uh, it administers personal independent payments. Miss Anderson has the authority to initiate an investigation if she has a reasonable suspicion of systematic maladministration or if systematic injustice has been sustained as a result of the exercise of professional judgment. She said that she is satisfied and the criteria for launching an own initiative investigation has been met. The investigation is set to examine the availability and application of further evidence such as GP records, occupational therapist assessments, carers reports, etc. in the decision making and mandatory reconsideration and complaints process. A spokesman for the Department for Communities responded saying PIP in Northern Ireland is administered in according with the same statutory framework that is in place across the rest of the United Kingdom. You see what had happened is somebody complained. So this source is Belfast Live. So somebody complained and they did find that the PIP is not being administrated properly in a lot of cases. And so, um, yeah, so that's it for now. I have got to go. Sorry about the slight interruption, but I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.